dear little dude, this is going to be a very special episode of this video series that I'm creating for you because we are going on location. I don't know why I pointed that direction. Uh, I took all of my AV gear and I went down to Florence where I was born and I interviewed one of my favorite people in the entire world, your great grandmother, Shirley. Um, grandma, my grandma, your great grandma, your Gigi, uh, is 87 and she is a hoot and she is one of my favorite people in the entire world and it was really important to me that you got the chance to see her and hear what she had to say to you. Um, she was pretty nervous about it. Uh, I had to convince her and bribe her with some clam chowder. Um, but I just, when we were talking, I didn't feel like I did a good job of telling you, little dude, why this is important. Your grandma is probably the person that I have the purest love for in my heart. Uh, she is a survivor. She raised five kids pretty much by herself. Um, she owned a restaurant at one point uh, that I used to go to all the time as a kid. Uh, she has survived breast cancer and a double mastectomy. Um, she has survived a few other brushes with death. About two years ago, I thought I was saying goodbye to her uh, in the hospital room and she ended up recovering. Um, she is not only strong, she is whip smart. Uh, she still does the crosswords very often and she's the one who gave me the love of doing that. Um, she loves country music. She used to dance and shut the bar down back when she was more mobile. Um, and all of us would be wonderful human beings if we were even a fraction of what my grandma Shirley, your Gigi, is. So I'm excited to share with you. It's a little longer than usual, but it's also adorable. It was, as usual, totally unscripted, totally unplanned. Grandma didn't know what I was going to ask. I didn't know what I was going to ask, but um, I had a lot of fun doing it, and I hope you enjoy getting to meet your Gigi. All right, thanks, little dude. Here we go. Dear little dude, hello, little man. Uh, you are at week 33 this week. You are, uh, your nickname this week is Peter Colada, uh, which comes from, uh, Grandma just learned about dear little dude yesterday. We'll introduce her in just a moment. Pia Colada. Well, that, that's the joke. Yeah, he's the size of a pineapple. Um, so you are just over four pounds. You are just under 17 inches. Your mom is oh. sick of you existing inside no. of her. Well, not sick of not sick of him as a person, sick okay. of him as a <laughs> thing that lives in her I belly. I can't be your grandmother if your father thinks his mother is. <laughs> well, you won't, you won't ever be his grandmother. You'll be his Gigi. Grandma's interrupting. This is grandma. <laughs> Uh, we, I'm mouthy. Yeah, she is. That's why she's getting interviewed. So this is a special episode of Dear Little Dude. Uh, oh, your man. mom kicked me out of the house um, because she had the baby shower for you. And she said, you need to take the dog and go away. Uh, so I came down to Florence to see my grandma, your great grandma, who you will call Gigi. Um, and uh, I decided that I wanted you to get the chance to meet her because grandma has this habit of every couple of years she likes to give us a scare uh and <laughs> she like she likes falling down and riding on airplanes on life flight to get to get home so i want to make sure that you get the chance to meet her when uh she is in her you said mouthy was that your word yeah you that's used? right and your mouthy you can use it in your mouth, your mouth. I know it. <laughs> so, uh, gra Grandma, this is again. I'm gonna call her Grandma because she's my grandma. This is your great grandma. So, Grandma, introduce yourself to little dude. Actually, I'm the greatest grandma. The greatest <laughs> grandma. <laughs> uh, what, what's your name, Grandma? Uh, my name is Shirley. Shirley, what? Lawrence. Shirley Lawrence. And how old are you? That's the most important oh, come thing. Come on. You okay, but let, let's Wait, have, let, let's put it this way: Who was president when you were born? Mercy. There was no, oh I thought you were saying President Mercy. There was never a President no. Mercy. <laughs> was it thirty four? Yeah. So that would have been FDR. FDR was president. Oh when yeah, because he was in there for four terms. Yeah, yeah. Well, he was in there for three, and then he, he at died the end, in his fourth. Term. Died in the fourth. But yeah, so you're so ha, 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 I know so as much you, as you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's what we're a tag team. This is actually the beginning <laughs> of turning this into a tag team podcast uh, between me and Grandma. <laughs> I told you it's melty. Yeah, that's right. That's that's where I get it. Um, Grandma, where were you born? I was born in New Westminster, British Columbia, Canada. So you are, do you have Canadian citizenship? No, no. I never was a Canadian. Okay. So my why were parents, you born? My parents were American. They had gone up there. Dad was playing semi-pro baseball. And he, he had all kinds of records up there. He went 29 and a half 
innings without anybody getting a hit. Wow. Yeah. But anyway, that's what they moved up there for. And then he got offered a job at the Fraser Mills, which was a lumber company. Yeah. And it was when the Depression was starting down in the States, so they just stayed up there and Dad worked, played ball. And, and they had the two oldest kids were born in Bellingham, Washington, and then the rest of us were born in Canada. And you say the rest of you. How many were there total? Seven. Seven. And you were the sixth of seven? That's correct. Yeah. So you had five older brothers and sisters. I had four older brothers and one sister and one younger brother. Okay. That makes sense. And yeah. you, so you were born in Canada. Do you remember anything about Canada? Yeah, it was a great school to go to. Yeah. You, yeah. Went, you went to elementary school up there? I went through half of the second grade. Okay. And then you came back to Bellingham. And the folks came back after the war broke out. Yeah. It broke out in, what, December, and we moved back, I think it was in March. And uh, that would be, what, 42. And uh, lived in Bellingham till we moved to the Oregon coast when I was still in high school. What do you what do you remember about moving down there? We're right, a little dude. So we are in Florence right now. Florence is where I was born. Oregon. Um, Flor Florence, Oregon. <laughs> yes, not Florence, Italy. On Did the not coast. <laughs> on the coast. It's Florence. Grandma's repping the repping the shirt right there. Three blocks up off the ocean. Three blocks up off the. <laughs> Grandma's just. Gonna, I like I like the dynamic. Every. <laughs> you better. Just, we've got to stop and start sub again. <laughs> subtitle everything I say. <laughs> Um, what, uh, what, so what do you remember about moving to the coast? What do you remember about coming here? Uh, let me think. Because I was thinking when, when we moved from Canada, I had in Pitago on my chin and I had to come down on the bus and had all the salmon bandages on my chin to keep me from scratching it. And I felt like it stuck out to here. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I remembered that part. And then how did we get to... You look at me. I wasn't there. I'm I don't know. I'm trying to think. We must have driven. Yeah. Must have driven down, and, and the first place we lived was a place called Cutler City. The cities I'm going to talk about now are are now Lincoln City. Okay. There were five cities, and they finally merged together, but that was after I left up there. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, we lived in Cutler City right on the bay, Taft, 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 Taft High School. Yeah. Yeah, Taft High School's still there. I graduated Taft High School. Yeah, one of the subscribers who watches this video, Anne Marie Sketch, went to Taft High School. She really? that's where she that's where she went to. Well my yeah. last name was Musket when I went to that school and we were the first grade to be in the new high school <clears throat> that was just being built. Yeah. Up on the hill. And the dogs are so excited about this that they're coming. This is why we always do one take, little dude. Watch this. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> disappear. I'm gonna open the door. And I'm gonna tell you what he's doing. What, what Can you hear him? <laughs> <laughs> he let the herd in. <laughs> um, so, Grandma, what what do you remember about growing up? Like, what do you remember? Like, what do you remember the most? Like, when I say growing up, what's the thing that pops into your head? Like, the, what was the thing that you remember doing as a kid that you really? I loved enjoyed? living in Bellingham, Washington. It was a great. There was always things to do, and we, we lived about a mile up from the school, and in those days. Uh, we had to walk to school. Yeah. Uphill we're, both we're, ways. We're, no, no, it was flat. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, they, they installed the hill later. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's still flat. Okay. I was up there not too many years ago. Yeah. So for the first time, and I about fell apart seeing what it looked like. Hardly anything was there that I remembered was there. Yeah. The parts parts of things that are like the movie theaters. There was a, yeah. a block, and they had did a movie theater on each one of the blocks. And... There do you was remember only one that was still going? Do you remember what movies? Like, do you remember a movie you saw when you were living up there? Oh gosh, uh, I don't. Know. My sister Mary took me in, when we lived in Canada. She took me to my very first movie, and it was Shirley Temple. Oh, yeah. I'm sure you loved that as yeah. Shirley Musket. And when we came out of the theater, and we lived at the bottom of the hill, and the theater was up there, and our house was down there. We saw the smoke and fire and all this and that. I said, Oh, Mary. <laughs> is that at our house? She said, I think it is. We better run. I said, not downhill. <laughs> Wait, your house was on fire when you came out of the no, movie? She just, it actually ended up being a chippy fire. Okay, because I have never heard... Little dude, Grandma loves telling stories, and I have heard some of them a thousand times, and I have heard some of them for the first time every time she tells them. So if she would have told me right now that the house had burned down, I would believe that, and I also would believe... <laughs> 
<laughs> I just that just hadn't been a story that you cared to tell. Well, I just said I had a big mouth. I didn't say I lied. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you do when you were like what, what what kind of extracurriculars and stuff did you do when you were in school? Were you in band? Were you in? No, choir? I didn't do that. I was in choir. Yeah, I was in choir. But, uh, were you a soprano or an alto? Well, they had me when I went to the Church of the Assumption in Bellingham. Yeah, and or the School of the Assumption School which was in the diocese of the Assumption Church. Yeah. And uh, we used to put on plays a lot there, Christmas plays and that kind of thing. And uh, I don't know. I just loved school. I loved where I lived. Uh, I don't know if anything dramatic that yeah. really happened. But... Well, I didn't say dramatic. I just, you know, whatever you enjoy. Here are the, the dogs in the audience, by the way. Who are are they? Okay, good. I thought they were about to be That's Riley getting and Lily. From... Well, Riley and <laughs> Riley is is Grandma's dog. Lily is mine. I'm gonna probably do an episode where I interview Lily at some point. I don't think she's a McNab. A McNab, what? A McNab. What's a McNab? A dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they are. Yeah. Okay. And Riley is a dog. She's, they're very. They're similar, but not. Border collies. Okay. Yeah, and she's, she's got, got border the, collie yeah, she's instinct. she's got all the markings of a border collie. Um. So, Grandma, <laughs> what? When? Um. So you you moved to Florence eventually. Yes. Um. And you, how many kids did you have? Five. You had five kids. Five little dude. Before what? I got to Florence, so I'd moved to California and lived with my sister for almost two years. Okay. And then you moved back. Then I moved back. Why'd you move back? Because I wanted to come home. Okay. This is good. <laughs> Good reason. And I should have stayed down there because my first marriage was a miss. <laughs> yeah. So you married you married the guy who is my grandfather by blood. My our you are my mom's dad, um, who was you, probably the tone of this video is usually pretty positive. Usually we don't like talking bad about anybody, but Grandma, how very, would you? He could be very nice. He could be very nice. How, pers personality plus. Yeah, and then other times. Well, we won't talk about that. <laughs> Ron Mead, who passed a couple years ago, it was not a very nice man most of the time. Um, but so, Grandma, you had five kids yes. with him. What do you? How did you meet him? How do you? How do? You, how did you end up being married to him? Well, when I came to back to Florence, I got a job in what they called the snack bar drive-in, which had a drive-in and a snack bar a, and a snack bar. Yeah, that's, that's so, a good name. But when I went first went to work there. I was kitchen help, and uh, it was kind of funny too because they used to have potato raises, and it took me, dumb me, took me three times to figure out that there wasn't any race to it at all. They were letting me. I always won. Who <laughs> <laughs> I always won on who peels and nut. Okay, so you're potatoes. peeling the potatoes. Well, yeah, for for uh, we never bought french fries already done yeah well when you say a potato race i thought you were like rolling them down the hill or something. oh no <laughs> <laughs> okay so and you're 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 so i did that and yeah. then they put me out on the fountain and i was a soda jerk yeah and i did that for a while and then i was started waiting table well it didn't have any tables only had one table in there but it was all counter and then i got to working on the counter and everything else and so one day the what well, that older said i, I sure I'm gonna, I'm gonna put you out there on the in the drive-in, see how you do out there. And I went, oh, okay, all right. Well, the drive-in held seven cars. And then there was this big empty lot, yeah. you know, for them to get into. And I said, I was working there one night, and I said, I did know how all everything worked. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, the movie theater got out or whatever it was. Something got out, and anyway, the drive-in just filled up, and all these cars were out there. So I said, I was running around taking orders from all the eight cars, and then I was running out through the deal. <laughs> Taking orders from them, uh -huh. coming in, putting these up. Pretty soon, they were says, "Where are you getting these orders?" I said, well, "From the cars." He said, "You don't do that." <laughs> I said, "Well, it's kind of late." You were an overachiever, yeah. Now we he have said, this food to make. How do you expect make? the ones that have driven in? How do you expect them to get out? So, Graham, remember the question was, "How did you meet my grandfather?" Well, I'm getting to <laughs> okay, it. Okay, okay, all right. Just want to make sure we're still on track. <laughs> this girl that I worked with, we used to, on. Uh, uh, we were closed on Mondays, so we'd take off on Monday nights. So we'd drive up to Mapleton and watch the baseball games. Yeah. Because that's where all the guys were. Yeah. And uh, then when we'd come back into town and everything, everybody would go down to the sand dunes, and we'd go up the sand dunes and have a party. Yeah. And I said, I had a wind-up phonograph, and that, I'd take that, and we had Phonograph a, is a record player, little dude. It's a, Oh, old, my God. Old, had had plastic records. Yeah, they were huge. 78. Yeah. <laughs> 
thick. Anyway, uh, so this one night we decided well we'd get smart. We went to the store. We bought a couple of quart jars of root beer and everything. And we got up there. We was taking these things and we was drinking out of them. And everybody said, "What you got there?" We said, "Oh, beer." Well, it was root beer. Yeah. And uh, and of course, all the guys by that time learned that we had beer. And I said, "We're having a party afterwards, but you got to bring your own bottle." <laughs> So that's how you got them to so bring the whole, alcohol. Both teams ended up coming down, and then here was all us idiots from Florence up there, up in the big, big sand dunes down south of Florence. Yeah, and uh, which it isn't that big anymore. I was just amazed when I drove in there. But anyway, uh, on one of the trips back, this car kept pulling up behind us and then kind of passing us. Yeah, and honk and wave and everything else. And I said, "You know who they are?" And she says, "Yeah, I know who they are." And uh, it was your grandfather and his cousin. Okay. And they were this playing. is this is this is what romance looked like back then. Is you just <laughs> drove alongside women that you liked and honked the horn. Well, so they knew who Dee was. Okay. That, that's okay. my girlfriend. Her yeah. name was Dee. Yeah. But anyway, we got down into town and everything else, and they got us. They were stopped on the side of the road, so of course she stopped. <laughs> mm-hmm. Being the good friend of mine that she was. Yeah. And I said, that's how I met your dad. And we went down and we had, they bought us hamburgers. And, yeah. And stuff. And we never did go to the party. How long did you, uh, how long did you date him before you got married? A year. Do you remember what you liked about him? What you were taking? Everything at that time. He was, just, while, while he was courting me, he was the, the nicest guy you'd ever want to meet. Yeah. And then you got married and yeah. it changed. But, but, well, I can't go into all the details. Yeah, we won't. That's, that's not the point. <laughs> but, but anyway. But you had five kids with him. Yes. And then he which, left. Which I, no, I left. Oh, you left. Okay. Yes. Um, good choice. Yeah. Um, and so then you raised five kids by yourself. Uh, for a long time. Yeah. For 10, I've got to get married. We went to Rocky and I get married in 78, 67, yeah, about ten years, I guess. Yeah, five kids all by yourself. Yeah. And what was what was your strategy? What was like what? How did you approach raising five kids by yourself? Oh, you the... don't approach it. You just do it. Yeah. I mean, I nowadays you could probably get all kinds of help and you know everything else. In those days, they didn't have it. Yeah. And I was drawing welfare and working and. Where were you working at that point? Uh. Oh God, I worked in restaurants down in Old Town, which was the town at the time. Yeah. And uh, then I worked up at the Shake Roof Inn, which isn't there anymore. It's burned down. Yeah. And uh, I don't worked at a restaurant south of town. Mostly restaurant work. Yeah. Yeah. What do you remember about being a parent during that during that time? It was hard. Yeah. Well, and uh, they say boys are hard to drive to. Well, I had they were all teenagers at one time. Yeah. Yeah. They tend to go through that. Yeah. yeah. So you know, and they were all sassy and. You know, and, and they'd get mad at me because I'd come home and they'd have dirty plates and stuff all over the front room, and I'd just yell at them. And they'd say, well, can't you say hello first, Mom, or something like that, you know? And I said, well, if you didn't have the damn dirty plates laying around, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, so I probably wasn't the best mother in the world, but I tried. Yeah. You know, what, what do you do? You just, and your kids you just have all, do it. Your kids all survive, and they all love you, and they're all... Yeah, I got all my kids, and I love every one of them. Yeah. And all my grandchildren. Eight, eight grandchildren... Yeah, uh, five great grandchildren. We talked. We we counted yeah, it yesterday. Yeah, yeah, including you, little dude. You're number five, by the way. You yeah. are. You're coming. You're on the way. And, and I've got to meet you, and I get to have a five by seven photo of you to put on my wall. Five by seven, not <laughs> an eight and a half. I don't. Not a full size. Five by seven. She wants five by seven because well, they don't fit on my wall anymore. Oh yeah, she's <laughs> got too many pictures. So this is actually right next to all. Grandma's got all kinds of pictures. So there's me and your mom and Lily. There's another one of me and your cousin Cora right here. So Grandma loves pictures. If you ever, if if you ever want to get Grandma Gigi, you'll call her Gigi. If you ever want to get Gigi something, you can get her pictures of you. By the way, that started with Cora. I know. Yeah, yeah, my mom came up with that. What do you remember about my mom when she was uh, when she was a kid? What was she like? Oh, my kids, including your mother, when they were little, were the sweetest little things. I really enjoyed raising those kids when they were little. Yeah, they were and then just... they grew up. And then they grew up, but mine's of their own. <laughs> yeah. And your mother went to, I probably shouldn't tell this story. No, that's what we're here for, Grandma. Well, yeah, but I don't want to tell stories about her. Anyway, she came in. <laughs> <laughs> and she had presents. At Rocky's mom and dad, Rocky was my second husband right. that I married. Right, my mom's stepdad. And uh, they didn't like him. Yeah. He was hard to he was hard to like, but he was good to me, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. What do you do? Yeah. 
anyway, uh, and he helped me more than what the kids realized he did. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, uh, where was I? <laughs> you were talking about my mom. Oh, his, his mom and dad had come down from uh, up near Portland to spend a weekend with us. And, and it was for Christmas. That's what it was. It was Christmas. And your mom came in, and she had gifts in her arms, and she had a drink in this other hand. And so she went over, and she was just happy, go lucky, da 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 you know. She bent over to put the presents down, and her drink started spilling in all, all the other presents. And, of course, dummy me, instead of just going over there and taking it away from her, I hollered at her, and uh -huh. that embarrassed her. Oh. And uh, psh, out the door she went. That sounds a lot like my brother Michael. My yeah. brother Michael had a, quite a few of those instances with my mom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, well, and I and I really knew better. I should have because I would hate to get yelled at in front of people. Yeah, it's embarrassing. You know. Yeah. But uh, but she was very timid in a lot of ways. Yeah. But very outgoing in other ways. So you know, and we all loved to dance. Mm hmm. And. Uh, I don't know. I'd, I'd rather dance than eat, to tell you the truth. But <laughs> I remember my mom, more than dancing, I remember my mom singing. My mom loved to sing. Oh, really? That's yeah, I say, she always sang a lot in the yeah. car as a kid. Um, and I that's why I sing a lot in yeah, the car. Yeah, well, we all did anyway. So yeah. I was always singing out there. In fact, is when I had my little restaurant, they used to call me the singing cook. <laughs> oh, yeah. The singing, dancing cook. <laughs> and grandma owned a restaurant. That's like grandma in the, what was it, the early 90s? You... I bought it in 93. Yeah. You bought a restaurant. It was called Shirley's Cafe. No, I bought it in 91. And it was right on the main strip of Highway 101 here right now. Now it is a Los Burritos Amigos. Is that what it is? It is. It still is. That's <laughs> who don't... you sold it to, and it still is. No, I drove... no, no, no. The first guy I sold it to, he had to he had to change the name, and he got out of it because there was one in Eugene. And he, right, he didn't but it's still permission. a burrito place. I yeah, drove by it on the way to, yeah, right. to get lunch for us today. Yeah. Um, what do you, um, as as little dude is about to come into the world, you've been around for 87 years. Mm -hmm. um, what's your advice to him? What do you want to say to him that hopefully helps him have a good life? Oh, gosh. Love your parents. They're going to love you for sure. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And this guy here. Me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you'll get everything you ever want with him. If you do it the right way. <laughs> All right. Tell me, what's the right way? I want to... Well, I don't. Just be nice. Love your life. and Do what you're supposed to do. And, yeah. And uh, I don't know. Be a little crazy. Yeah. Just a little bit. But, the right but amount of crazy. What can I say? I'm going to knock all this stuff No, over. you're fine. It's fine. It's good. It's there. But anyway, I, I just don't know what... I, I kind of lived my own life, and I kind of went astray there a couple of years, but... Yeah. I guess everybody does after they live the kind of life I have. And I've had, I've had streaks in my lifetime where I, a couple of times I didn't know whether I was going to get through it or not, but I did. Yeah. So that's all you can do. Just you know, you get old, but you try to stay young. But your body won't let you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I woke up so, with a stiff neck today, and so I'm see, like, 30s, yay. Yeah. So the mouth keeps me going. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, this is a family that loves to talk. Hi, Lily, and you're a dog that loves to sniff. Well, we've all been like walkers. My dad walked everywhere. He walked over 10, 15 miles but when he lived out up in Bellingham to go down to play ball and go to school and everything. Yeah. And, and, uh, and when I was living with him, we always went for walks. And if I ever got in trouble or a fight with my mom or something else, he'd say, come on, kid, let's go for a walk. Yeah. And so we've always walked, and I miss that more than anything. Yeah. In fact, if I had my brothers right now, you and I would have the dogs be down on the beach, walking on the beach. Heck yes, and I'd be complaining because I don't like sand in my shoes. That's just how I roll. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> <laughs> Take them off and go barefoot. <laughs> Well, before we before we wrap up, and Grandma has a, a the dad joke for this week. She told it to me yesterday, oh, and it was approved. Mercy. So you are you have the dad joke for this week. But I, I do want to just tell you, little dude, um, Grandma is one of my heroes, and oh. so I'm going to do it on her for a second. I drove. We drove. We live about three hours away from Grandma, um, and so I drove here yesterday to go see her because Grandma has been for as long as I, Grandma used to yell at me a lot when I was a grand, a little kid, because uh, I was like a lot of kids. I was a brat, um, and I was I talked back a lot. I had a very. Would you agree with that? 
Oh, she's she's not saying anything. She, uh, yeah, she's being polite. But uh, my grandma is one, and your Gigi is one of the sweetest people that I've Aww. ever met. And the way that you can tell that someone is sweet is by the people that love them. Um, and grandma's kids love her, and grandma's friends love her, and grandma's grandkids love her, and you will love her someday too. But I hope that you get the chance to watch this and enjoy i i feel grandma has made every every time i get to see you it makes my life better and i always am grateful oh, for it that's but so sweet but i don't um we don't get to see each other as much as we get to, as we would like so this hopefully you'll get to see grandma and talk with her and i hope when you're a little bit older you get to give her a hug and a kiss and tell her yeah. that you love her because yeah. she she loves she loves to be loved and she deserves it well after that long dissertation if you grow up half as good as i did you're okay <laughs> <laughs> grandma do you want to tell anyway, your uh do you want to tell your sure okay okay I now haven't... before she does i have to explain merle haggard is the person who's the subject of this joke and i'm not ruining the punchline merle haggard was an old country star you she's grandma doesn't explain every part of the story but i want to make sure you know so that's what you gotta know so go ahead go. i was going to tell him all that oh okay well i <laughs> He was, he is, he was a very big star. He had taken every award in country you could ever take, but he died, you know, four or five years ago. But anyway, still singing at his age, 79. But anyhow, uh, his son, who would go on tour with him every once in a while when he got older, and, and they had been in this concert, the concert got all over with, and he said, that, this is the boy talking. And he said, uh, this woman came up out of the audience, and he said she was just so excited she was going to get to see Merle Haggard. Oh my God, so excited! And she was talking about her and her dog or something. And when he mentioned her dog, she says, "My dad came into the conversation," and she just got so excited. He says, "Oh, I know a woman had a dog." He says, and he says he didn't let this woman get a word in, and he says, and she named him Tax, and every time. They'd open the door, income tax. <laughs> income tax. <laughs> and he turned around and walked off. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I get it. Little dude, you're what this is this is where it comes from. Grandma's the source. Grandma's the source oh of Oh my god. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh grandma, before we uh wrap up for dear little dude, uh you first of all, do you want to tell a little man that you love him? I know you haven't met him yet, but you wanna... Oh, I know I'll love you. Yeah. I, pro I probably do now and don't realize it because I don't, I, you know, i got to touch things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the bump is a very far away. I love away. all my kids, all my grandkids, all my great-grandkids. And, and we love you. Lord, that it all oh, bless your heart. I love you, too. Um, do you want to tell everybody, like, comment, subscribe? Like, comment, subscribe. Just say those three words. Comments? L like. 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 Like the video. Subscribe. Subscribe and. And watch. Comment. And watch while they're already watching. Comment. <laughs> comment. Yeah, comment. Oh, comment. Comment. You have yeah. To talk split. My hearing aid just went out. That's what it is. Yeah. So great. <laughs> it, it did. So comment, subscribe, like, watch, and have your hearing aids checked. <laughs> I uh, can't remember all that at once. <laughs> I'm lucky I remember my name still. We love you very much, little yes, dude. Yes, we do. I'm so happy that we could share and this we moment love with this you. This guy too. Mm. We hope you're having a great week. Thanks so much, little man. Bye. Bye. Bye.